I can almost hear people out there asking, all right, can I, can I afford this? You know, uh, it, does insurance cover it? So let's address that question. Sure. Uh, insurance, most, in most cases, does not cover this because it's considered an elective refractive procedure. And uh, that being the case, though, there are two ways to look at this. One is there are studies being done which show that contact lens wearing over a lifetime is more expensive than LASIK procedure on average. Now, LASIK prices also differ. So it's the patient must do their due diligence in finding out the facility, the surgeon, investigating the track record of the surgeon, because you really don't want to go to a fly-by-night operation or go for a deal. Uh, I've always said this on stage. I mean, blindness at any deal is not a great bargain. These are your eyes. So find out what the prices are, what the cost is, and why, and what's your surgeon's qualification, what is involved. And also, the other thing I don't like is, uh, you know, when people uh, go in and they get different prices for different things, my point again is, Keep the price as your second question. Mm -hmm. Your first question is still, we'll keep repeating through the show, Bruce, is what am I a candidate for, doctor? First tell me that, then we'll discuss the price. You don't want to go and say, I want so and so surgery. Well, who decided that for you? And you don't really want a doctor who knows only one or two techniques, but now they are narrowed down to doing those two techniques for you for various reasons. You want to make sure your doctor can do numerous techniques to remove your glasses. That's where you get a tailored technique. Now discuss prices. That's okay. And, and while we're talking about money issues, people sit back and say, okay, well, it's cheaper to me for me to go ahead and buy a pair of glasses at, you know, a couple of hundred, 250 bucks with the frames or, or, or contacts. But if you amortize it over the course of a year or a couple of years, that's a fa uh, financial consideration as well. It is. And that's what I was relating to the study with contacts. The other thing, Bruce, is lifestyle. I mean, for somebody who is more than minus three nearsighted or more than plus three farsighted or more than minus two astigmatism, their lifestyle is very hindered. They can't even get into many professions. They cannot enjoy the outdoors or even whatever their, or, you know, their day-to-day -day living is. So that freedom of, uh, of, uh, of, of lifestyle, I think that itself has a value. But I got to tell you, my tennis game would suffer when I wore glasses because, you know, you're constantly going like this with the sweat coming down. Yep. We're going to introduce you to John Paul in a second and tell you his story. But first, let's take another viewer question. This is from Rod just off I-10 over there in Marietta, he writes, I'm in my 50s and have always worn contacts or glasses. And we've answered this indirectly now. Am I too old to get LASIK? Straight answer, no. There is no, no such thing, like I've said before, there is no such upper limit for age as long as your eye is healthy. Now, where I would, again, explain this thing in detail, though we've discussed this, is, again, the question is already saying the word LASIK which doesn't make sense to me ever. That's why me and my staff are also very, very, all the doctors I train, I, I tell them this one thing. Never, never focus on one thing without knowing that that's the best thing for the patient. That's a wrong way of thinking. So his question should actually again be, I am 50. I don't want to wear glasses and contact. Doctor, what's my option? And now you go and say, okay, I'm looking at your eye with technologies that I carry here, which we've introduced in Northeast Florida. Let's say we do the Penacam. And I see early lens changes. Or if I see that he's very far-sighted. Mm -hmm. Now the whole surgery changes to lens-based. If I see his near-sighted with astigmatism, LASIK. If the cornea is thinner, advanced laser surgery without cutting a flap. If, uh, like we're going to see a patient here, very near-sighted and the cornea is too thin, you can put a contact lens permanently in the eye. So the options are so numerous, but you can see how it unfolds once you see the patient. All right. So the straight answer is absolutely. Let's yes. see one of your patients. John Paul, if you would join us up here on the couch. You, you know, you hear a lot about high-definition TV these days, and I guess, I guess there's a parallel here because we're going to talk about high-definition vision. So, John Paul, tell me your story pre-surgery. Um, well, prior to surgery, I was nearsighted, extremely nearsighted. I had to wear glasses and contact lens. Um, um, so it, it, it turned out to be a bit of a burden to me, especially when I was studying at the university here locally at UNF. Um, and so I just wanted to kind of um, change that. I wanted to have clear vision every day where I wake up and I won't have to worry about um, reaching over, getting a pair of glasses, or going to the bathroom and putting on my contact lens. All right, so John Paul comes into your office. You hear his story. You hear his concerns. You hear how he wants to change his lifestyle mm -hmm. and your response. So, John Paul, if you recollect, uh, this is what I do with everybody, but I'm sure you'll recollect extensive discussion. Yes. Right? Extensive Wait a testing. second. Let me, let, you, you, you take your time with the patients because so many Absolutely. doctors usher you in and out. Cannot. Being a practice, um, I see LASIK complications from all over the world referred to us, and we've done shows on that too before. Bruce, I'll tell you, I have zeroed it down to just one thing. The patients were very intelligent. The doctors meant very good, but why do complications occur? If I have to zero down on one thing, 
It is the surgeon and patient not meeting before surgery and not spending time going over an extensive Q&A. And like I said, the same question again, is this the best technique for me, doctor? Mm -hmm. Or are you doing the only one thing that you know? Very big difference here. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but that was an important point. Yes. So anyhow, you and John Paul are sitting there. You're having a discussion about his eye care health and his yes. future. So yes. then John Paul, we discussed, I discussed his future and, um, you know, what he wants to do, what is his profession he wants to get into, what does he expect from vision, his outdoor desires and stuff. Looked at his eye in detail anatomically with the Penicam in 3D. Did all those testings and came to a conclusion that his cornea was thinner than most people and he was nearsighted with astigmatism. I wanted to correct everything. And we also do higher order corrections, meaning beyond nearsightedness, farsightedness, astigmatism, there are also certain orders of vision which you must be after. That's what results in vision better than 2020. So okay, you, you can, everything's the 2020 is the standard, the gold standard. No, it's not. With majority of our patients going better than 2020 with the techniques that we've been doing, I mean, John Paul is another example. Uh, John, what's your vision right now? 2010. 2010. Which is better than 2020. So 2020, better than 2020 is 2015, one line better. Mm -hmm. And 2010 is two lines better. It's as good as supervision. So, so that means you can see the very bottom line there on that eye chart that we all hate when we stand there yes, in the end. Absolutely correct. Actually, many eye charts don't have a 2010. Really? You have to special order or nowadays, since we are teaching this concept, companies are producing. Eye charts don't, in many cases, don't even have better than 2010. Right, so i got to ask you, again, I can, I can hear the questions filtering in through the web here. So the, the joy of social media. <laughs> did it hurt? No, it did not. Was there any discomfort? No, at all. How long from the time you walked into the office for the procedure itself to the time you went home? Um, within hours, I can see 20, 20. I was, I was seen perfectly fine. Obviously, I still had a little bit of discomfort um, because of the surgery, of course. But by the end of the day, I was seen perfect. I didn't have to wear glasses or anything at all. I and how long fortunate. before John Paul's life was back to as it was the day before the surgery? Within days, I was back to normal. Even better, a lot better. So what can you do now that you couldn't do before that you're like, wow, why didn't I do this sooner? Well, some of the things is obviously I can go in the swimming pool to the beach um, wouldn't have to worry about the contacts kind of drifting away, if you will. Um, some of the other things that I can do um, is, you know, I don't have to go shopping for contact lens anymore. I don't have to go visit my doctor once a year because obviously I'm, I'm, I have 20, 20 10 vision. Mm -hmm. I'm perfectly fine. So I'm excited about that. Well, great. Thanks so much for sharing Thank your you story. Thank you so much for your time. Appreciate you being here. So let's, uh, uh, let's oh, share another viewer's again. question. Okay. Um, this is from Melanie in Arlington, and Melanie in Arlington writes, my daughter is 17 and wants LASIK. Is she a candidate or too young? So I guess what it's Melanie really wants to know is, are my daughter's eyes still changing and do I have to wait? Yes. And again, Bruce, I'm pointing out that word again for the third time in the question. It already says LASIK. And this is my biggest thing here is, uh, remember guys, LASIK is just one among close to 20 laser vision techniques that your doctors should know and should present to you as what is best for you. And then if they choose LASIK, it's great. That's one of the best surgeries, but it should be applicable to you. So number one, your question should again be, I'm 17 years old and I need to see without glasses and contacts, what is my best option, doctor? And let them come with the answer saying, okay, it's LASIK. And if, if it's LASIK, then what kind of LASIK? And so the answer is again, one, is it the best technique? Second, at 17, I would like you to wait another year at least but again, I would like to see your records of the past two years to see if you're changing in your vision or have you stabilized. That's vital for me to decide if you're ready for surgery. All right. So let's go to the next question because it's from uh, Henry in Miramar. He says, I had cataracts removed two years ago and I'm 72. He asked, can I get LASIK? I'm not going to ask you that again because I know the answer. But is he a candidate for reconstructive eye surgery? Yes, absolutely. You can have LASIK and you can have laser vision surgery. Think about this now for a moment. You have had surgery, this is Henry you said from Miramar. Henry from Miramar. Henry, you have had surgery for cataract. So the only pathology in your eye which was age related was your lens which became cloudy. That's what's called a cataract and your doctor did a great job, took off the cataract, put an interocular lens in, all right? Now your eye is a normal camera. Only thing affected now is the shape of the viewfinder like we discussed, the cornea. So you shape that up with the laser, you have full potential. If there's no disease in your eye, you have full capability of getting to